Nowadays, we're all pretty used to seeing impressive things happening in movies, like cars turning into robots, actors being de-aged, sharknadoes... Well, anyway, the point is that computer-generated imagery is now used so extensively that we thought it would be refreshing to see how special effects were made back in the day before computers. So in this video, we're going to explore some of the magic behind those special effects in this SFX breakdown of the all-time Christmas classic, Home Alone. Home Alone may not really stand out as a movie that would require many, if at all any, special effects, but there were actually quite a few dotted about in places you wouldn't have expected them to be. As, aside from using potato flakes and a fan to simulate the snow for this shot, most of the special effects were for safety reasons, like, for example, using this rubber chair to softly squash Fuller's face up against the wall. Or this shot, where, in order to do it safely, they filmed it in reverse and you can easily tell by watching his scarf. Notice how it seems to reach out and touch the van as it gets closer? That's because when you play this shot backwards, you can clearly see that the scarf is actually getting pulled along by the truck as it moves away. To do this shot, they had crew members shake the van before pulling it backwards to simulate the motion of the van's suspension. And when you play it in reverse, it actually looks quite convincing. Well, apart from the magnetic scarf. The special effects in Home Alone also helped to protect actor Daniel Stern's feet. Where? You ask? Well, let me show you. For the scene where he loses his shoes and socks and ends up standing on a nail, it was luckily only a soft rubber nail that didn't hurt a bit. Or when you see him running barefoot outside in the snow, thankfully he had a cosy pair of rubber feet to wear as you can see here. Huh. And when he comes in through the window and plonks his feet down on a bunch of ornaments, they were made out of special sugar glass that is designed to break easily and not cut but it still must have hurt. However, it wasn't just Stern's feet that were protected by effects, they also protected his face. I mean, shooting a BB gun point-blank into someone's face is kind of crazy dangerous, so instead they paid a guy called Kevin Nordine, who had a studio in his parents' basement to do some VFX. Like, all of the VFX. For the entire movie. Yep, this one guy working out of his parents' basement in Chicago, charging roughly $600 depending on the shot, was responsible for all of the VFX in Home Alone. From superimposing Kevin's family members onto this shot, to making Harry's tooth shine. And, of course, adding this ball bearing that allowed Daniel Stern to do this shot without actually getting shot. This was done by hand-painting the ball bearing right onto the film, frame by frame. Which actually looks pretty awesome. Although, one small gripe is the lack of motion blur on the last two frames that make the ball bearing look a bit fake. I know I'm nitpicking, but let's just fix that. Much better. But perhaps the only scene where Stern's face wasn't protected by special effects, other than the shot where he stood underneath a 300-pound camera falling towards his face, relying on a rope to stop it, was where the tarantula gets put on his face. That sucker was 100% real. And while special effects mostly helped Stern from getting injured, many of actor Joe Pesci's booby trap scenes relied on stunt doubles to keep him safe. However, forgetting about those shots for a moment, there is one memorable scene where Pesci was thankfully protected by some clever camera trickery, as for this scene, they needed to blowtorch his head. They achieved this by using a technique called Pepper's Ghost, which is actually quite an old camera trick. To do this, they set up a sheet of glass in front of the camera, angled at 45 degrees. Then they set up a dark booth with a black mannequin head and a blowtorch with a black nozzle, off shot and also 45 degrees from the sheet of glass. It's kind of similar to green screen in a way that it's essentially creating a mask. But this mask is black and instead works because the camera will only see a reflection when there is enough light bouncing off the glass. So anything that is black isn't giving off enough light and thus invisible to the camera. So when Joe Pesci stands in just the right spot, the reflection of the flame lines up and even looks like it's moulding around his head thanks to the shape of the black mannequin's head. All you need then is to add some additional flickering light to Pesci to simulate the light coming off the fire and you've got a pretty convincing special effects shot. The only problem is, if you look carefully, you can see some additional spill of light on the curtains behind the blowtorch being reflected onto the glass. And if you look here, you can also see the edges of the mannequin's head outline, where Pesci's face isn't quite lined up. But despite all of that, it still looks pretty convincing. 
please give us a thumbs up and let us know in the comments section if you enjoyed watching this video and if you'd like to see more breakdowns of special effects. Also, don't forget that the links to the music in this video are in the video description. And as always, you can catch us in the next one.